Hello, my name is Anya, and today we are going to create a tabbing system using URL parameters. When we go to the layout of the page, it is by default fixed, but I want to preface by saying that for this to work, we need to make one of these we need to make it one of these. I'm gonna make it row, but it just depends on the design that you choose. And I'm gonna keep it fixed to begin with because I think using one of those container layouts is a little bit confusing and it moves around the elements while you're making them, which I don't personally like. Now I'm gonna make a group tab, which is just going to house all of the tabs that we make. I'm just going to make two, tab one, and tab two. Now I made this have a type of content which is going to be text and I'm just making it tab one but whatever this value is is what's going to eventually be shown as the text that the tag tab displays so make it whatever you want. I'm doing the same thing for tab two but I'm making the data source tab two instead. Now, within this, you can have a group be your tab. You can just have a simple text as your tab, but I'm going to, you could even use a button, but I'm just going to use text. And that text is going to be the parent group's text. See the same thing over here. Oh, we just made it bold. over here. If we preview this, see that this one's saying tab one and this one's saying tab two, which is exactly what you want. You can make this obviously look a lot prettier and better, but I'm not focusing on that right now. Now I'm going to add in a group and this group is going to house all of the content that we would want displayed when group tab one is visible. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and I'm going to make the same thing for group tab two. In group tab one, you would put whatever content you want shown, but I'm just going to put a shape so we can differentiate between the two. And I'm going to do the same, except I'm going to make group tab two shape be red. Now we can change the layout. Now that all the elements are set up, we can change the layout to row. This gives us this functionality, collapse when hidden, which we are going to enable for both of these. This is just going to mean make it so that this whole group is going to condense into nothing, essentially disappear when it's not shown, which just means that when this group is not shown, this whole thing is going to move up, which is exactly what we want. We're going to make it also so that it is not visible on page load. And you'll see why in a little bit. When this text is clicked, we want to go to our current page, but we want to make set up a URL parameter, which is basically what you see here. That parameter is just going to be group tab one's text. To do the same thing for the other one. And that one is going to be group tab two's text. It's what you see here. If we preview this, we can see that when this one is clicked, we see this, which is exactly this text, except for this percent 20, which is just a replacement for spaces, because as you know, you can't have a space in a URL. The same thing for tab two, it changes to tab two, which is exactly what we want. But let's make it so that this group tab one is only visible when we get the data from the page URL, we read what tab's value is, and then we check if that is the same 
as group tab wants text. And if it is, we show this group. I'm going to actually copy over that condition because it is the same skeleton, except instead we are checking if it is group tab choose text. If we preview this now, we can see that when the text is tab one, we see this shape and the same thing for tab two. And you can see that this isn't in a funky spot. Well, it is kind of because I didn't make it aesthetically pleasing as far as my setup, but this is exactly what we want. And the blue shape is nowhere in sight. Now this works and honestly, you could just end the video right now, but it's not the best practice because over here, two times we had to get the tab from the page URL and we had to type in tab, which leaves a little room for error. So it's better practice to just store this value in a variable. Now variables are often kept in pop-ups that are never shown. They just live on the page, but they don't affect any of the functionality. I'm storing, I'm using a group as a variable and that's just going to store the tab text. And we are going to do the same thing that we did in those conditionals. And we're going to get the data from the page URL and we're going to get tab and we're going to store it here. Now over here, instead of having to do this, we can just reference the variable and compare that with each of the group's text. Now, if we test this, it works the same. Whoops, I did not make this group tab two's text. Now, if we test this, now if we test this, we can see that it works the same. And it's just a little bit cleaner, less error prone code. Good job, guys.